Hi, Lila. Hi, Stassi. Welcome to the sleepover, sleepover episode, episode of Ability. Thank you, God. Welcome back to Lila Ability, you guys, where we talk all things dudes, dollars, daddies, and divas. Yeah. <laughs> We missed you guys. I don't know how you guys have been, but I feel like I'm a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm personally a fucking wreck and yeah. I need God, Gandhi, Buddha and everyone else to tune in and help a bitch out. I need so- a head transplant like <laughs> Khloe Kardashian. I need everything transplanted, but we are here to have a sleepover with you guys. So get your jammies ready. Get some snacks. Get your fucking drinks in Mimosa. the Cheers. Cheers to good friendship, good memories. And Lila Billity, you guys. So, how are we? I'm good. What's been going on with you? I feel like the month of February has just been like the most nonstop feral month ever. Ever. And I've lived like honestly more lives than any cat or bad bitch that you know. This month. But this month of February, and you guys should be seeing this sometime soon. It's not even over yet. No. It's 2-2. Two, two. Two two two, two four. four. <laughs> okay, let's and do it again. Stoss has been doing a lot of travel. Yeah, you went to Vegas. I did Vegas, New York, and Lake Tahoe all back to back to back. And I feel like you genuinely are the type of person that like one trip or like even one trip to dinner it takes me out for like days out of the game. And if like her full spray tan, her lily lash, like if her hair is not done and if her spray tan is not by Guy Corey, yeah, no, she she's not there. Like no. she she will miss it. Mentally, How was Vegas though? Uh, mentally, after all, like all these trips, I'm just like mush in my brain. But Vegas was fun. Vegas was honestly lit as fuck. Like, I just I don't experience that level of like savagery on a yeah. daily basis because I'm it's just a black like, hole. Yeah, I couldn't leave. Speaking <laughs> of Vegas, I couldn't. Leave. So I went to Vegas for my best friend's birthday. It was so much fun. Like, saw my best friend, saw Christina Aguilera, saw Big Sean. You know how we do. She did her whole nine. My big one. <laughs> it, so to her speak. Her biggest one. Um, and that was a her lot big of Sean. fun. No, I did my Big Sean big one. That was a lot of fun. But honestly, I have to say, like, the things I've seen in Las Vegas, I will never understand that lifestyle. Just wake up. It's you know, unlike whatever. anything. Like, like any other city. I really do think that. It's just, it's a fucking mess. Cause and it's like, I got sucked into it it's and a I warp. couldn't get out. You guys, they canceled my flight three times. Jet suite. I'm calling you out. Get fucking, oh my God. President Biden. I have he a He was landing. So they canceled their flight for days. For days. I had a, fu- I have a fucking bone to pick with fucking President Biden because one thing about me, I don't like missing anything i like a schedule i like being on time she's an itinerary type of girl for sure biden pops in pops out for a day the whole world stops like okay (laughs) who made you like the president president? like that's what i'm (laughs) saying like i just feel like that was wrong and that was rude and i'm waiting for my apology but whatever i'm fine first of all if i'm being honest i forgot the man was president and so when she calls me I know you guys all have that best friend, whether you live with them, whether you live in the same city as them. I know you have that person that like when you're separated, it like your soul is not in your body. And, I like, can't wake up. I can't go to bed. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I was literally having yeah. withdrawals from her presence and literally her like oxygen breathing. And then she calls me crying like with her like chrome hearts on at the jet suite terminal. And she's like, they canceled it again. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, time to go back to your hotel where it smells like nothing but cigarettes yeah. and depressed gamblers. And if you guys have been to Vegas, I feel like you have to know, like you go to the club, but then clubs don't close at 2 a.m. Like it is in LA. Oh no, honey. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, holidays. <laughs> Kwanzaa, they, all that. They don't know Christmas. They don't know Easter. They no. don't know President's Day. Mm-mm. But they knew Joe Biden was that's landing. That's right. for sure. Um, but Vegas was cute. Then you wake up hungover. You go to the day club. You somehow get ready for a dinner that you're going to black out at. And then yeah. you go to the club again. Like, And somehow like lose $2,000 doing roulette. It was a rat race for Did sure. Did you do any gambling? Um, no, I'm not good at that. And it's also like weirdly like against my like religion. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... I just watch I mean, people gamble. That's a good thing to have against your religion. I think it was a gamble <laughs> just going there, honestly. That was my bet, and I lost. And then we went to New York. So that – also, you being in Vegas y'all. without me was rude because y'all know me. Like, I'm sorry. I'll go out till 6 in the morning, and I will wake up at 8 a.m. Yeah, no. And, like, do my soul cycle. New York City was – We've done, never done New York together. The best trip I've ever been on. Like, being from the East Coast, 
as a child experiencing New York, but as an adult was a whole nother level during fashion week. Oh, bitch. They knew we landed. They knew the dolls were in town because everywhere we went, we were treated like actual royalty. And I've never been somewhere where that like happened, if I'm being completely honest. I, I thought we were like being punked most places because it's like, oh, we call like a, a busy ass restaurant. We're like so fucking late. We go there. We go to Tao. They give us the best, most expensive table. We're just sitting there eating like one fucking green bean. Honestly, my silicone migrated to my ankles. Right. My butt is fucking bony. I do not want to sit on a wooden ass chair where I feel like I'm literally at the kids table on Thanksgiving when I was 10 years old. Like, yeah. I don't. I really don't. But we landed. Yeah. We got to New York somehow after I went out all night. That was a mess in itself. Got okay. in our, sub our Suburban, showed up to the Arlo Hotels. If y'all know, y'all know. <laughs> we love you, Arlo. I swear something about New York. You can text one person and all of a sudden you have like the most exclusive night of your life ahead yeah. of you. And you're like. You don't even have time to breathe. I don't even. And of course, it's freezing. Yeah. And so if you know me and Stoss, you know that like usually I don't wear clothes. we like can pack light because each outfit is like a piece of toilet paper. Respectfully. And so packing for New York City was like, oh, <laughs> we're going to be in a smaller hotel room than we're used to. Yeah. It was cozy. And though. we need parkas. Like, mm -mm. N I don't mm -mm. do the cold. No, no, no. I have this weird thing about the cold. Like, maybe it's the like mental illness in me, but it makes me feel boxy. Like, it makes me feel big. <laughs> like, I don't want to feel like... Like, I'm, like, waddling around with my big coat yeah. on. Then I'm sweating. Then what if I'm sweating? Where am I putting my coat? Like, I learned what a coat check was this trip. That was crazy. Every club, New every concept. restaurant. Yeah, I was not used to that. And then, as you guys know, I did a bar stool reality show, like, a year ago. So one of the guys on the show, his name was Noah. He's, like, love a hot, him. like, redhead guy. Obsessed like obsessed with you, Noah. We love you. Loki have a crush on him, if I'm being completely honest. He, like... Yeah, I don't even know. But he was like, oh, my friend, like, is connected with someone at The Box. And if you guys didn't know, The Box is the most exclusive, craziest place you will go in your entire life. Like, they have, like, performances where people, like, have sex on stage. They will take a shit in your mouth on stage. Yeah, not, like, Wicked. The, no, 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 honey. <laughs> it was Wicked. This is off-Broadway, honey. Let me tell you one thing, okay? <laughs> and definitely illegal. Yeah, like, super. The, one thing about New York is that every, like, there, I could probably name 30 things there's that I was no like. There's no rules. No, that's. Are we, like, in New York City? Like, there's no way this is legal. No, no, no. And so we get to the box. Someone's, like, pulling an entire skirt out of their butthole on stage. Insane. Not kidding. Like, it's like a club, but then, like, on the hour, I think they're like, okay. They have a performance. Buckle up, motherfuckers. And we're like, oh. Like and you're drunk. Your jaw is on the fucking floor. And you're just sitting there, like, hoping to God that they don't squirt in your mouth. Because they will. Because they did. I'm not. No, they did. <laughs> they squirted into a shot glass. And somebody drank it on their birthday. And it's not something where it's like, oh, was that real? Like, oh, oh, they were spread eagle. Uh-huh. Like, honestly, Lila style. Like, they. True talent. <laughs> True talent. I, they were gaped. I was like. And then, yeah. like, 4 a.m., someone dressed as Anna Wintour came out, shit on stage. Yeah. I was like, my poor girl, Anna. Like, they wiped their asshole with Vogue. Summer issue. And it doesn't. It doesn't, <laughs> like, even get more insane yeah. than that and it was crazy because the guy that we went with i was making out with him i was doing my biggest this is the t let's say oh. his name is like teddy yeah to be honest like love you teddy love you teddy the next day i'm like oh my god was i literally like tongue deep in teddy at the box yeah my friend texts me he's in prison <laughs> county like, what happened within those 10 hours because I went to the bodega and I got my bagel and quesadilla and I went to bed and yeah. then woke up and went to Soho. Yeah. He woke up and went to the precinct. Yeah. He was he was clocking in for the day. And I just don't like hearing that anyone goes to jail because honestly, if you I don't know if you guys know this. Sad. Free Teddy. Free Teddy. I think he's free now. Apparently he like lost 20 pounds and like I mean had a heart. Well, I mean, honestly, DIY was unpicked. I hope his dick didn't lose 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you might just have to go back to New York, honey. I'll check myself in real quick. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys even knew this, but I myself, well, honestly, I was a boy, so technically it doesn't even count. Have been to jail. Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> For one night, and it was actually really traumatizing. I don't know if you've ever been in any trouble with the law. No, but my sister has. My sister was in jail for two years when we she were sixteen. She was in jail like during your high school, right? Yeah, when I was sixteen. That's crazy. Did she come back looking like skinnier? 
no <laughs> damn no she like looked like she got a bbl honestly she looked great she probably did she to be good, honest honestly prison did her really good <laughs> honestly i wish i would have went it's always crazy seeing like people in prison like yeah. i'll never forget someone that i know like her sister went to jail and she was like she would randomly post a photo of her like crocheting a chanel bikini in yeah. prison and i'm like Oh, they're getting their hair done. I like, mean, Stassi Bell Beauty, they're coming for you. Come on, Unit 365. Let's go, it's baby. wild. And so it was me, Kaylee, and Stas, my two best friends in the whole entire world. And, like, I have to admit, I've kind of been in a little bit of a, like, Lila Bender. And usually, okay. like, once it's 3 a.m., I'm like, yeah, bye, guys. New vocab word, Lila Bender. Lila Bender. <laughs> <laughs> But this bender is a little different. Like, it's like serving 6 a.m. average. And it's like, mm. go home. The sun is rising. And you're not awake for hot yoga. Like, literally no. go home and sleep with Daisy. Like, why are you out? They're serving continental breakfast. Go to bed. <laughs> go <laughs> right. to bed. Like, where is my, like, pancakes, flapjacks, peanut butter, syrup, whole nine? Yeah. And so I thought going to New York with Kaylee and Stas was going to be, like, rehab. Like, detox. Honey. <laughs> no fucking way. New York just takes it there. Like, literally, I, I don't know if the club's closed, to be completely honest. Like, I don't know if they have raw rules or laws anymore. But, like, 7 a.m., like, hotel key. Like, and then we'd wake up at 10 a.m. and go to Soho. Yeah. Do so our was, cunty girly shit. What was your favorite part? Honestly, seeing my sister. Oh, my God, you so guys. Wait, tell them about it. It was really cute. So, I haven't seen my sister in, like four and a half years when I moved to LA I packed a suitcase and I was like I'm either going to be back in a week or you're You'll not gonna never see me, see me again <laughs> you're not gonna see me again and it was four <laughs> years ago so I finally saw my little sister shout out Chad I love you Chad and I love you I feel like I like gained a sister to be completely watch honest. Lila's newest vlog if you want to see <laughs> any of the fucking madness that endured this trip <laughs> but I think reconnecting like with my family was the best part and like honestly being with you guys in any setting is just the best and we always make the best time out of literally just sitting on the floor. We, would, we could be at the Motel 6 and we yeah. will be like just dying laughing. Like there's no stopping us. I really do think that. And I mm -hmm. think that like we have our glitz, our glamour, our like nonsense of like literally laying horizontal in a suburban together. But like yeah. seeing her reconnect with her family and then I actually met up with my cousin who I haven't seen in years as well. And Yo, so it's like <laughs> Lila's cousin's hot. <laughs> Lila's cousin's hot. Like, Everyone was coming for him. Max, if you're watching this, like, I'm going to bust a move on you. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, like, our last night in New York, to be honest. Yeah. So it's, like, obviously, like, the fun, the box, the, like, the whole, like, glitz and glam of it all is yeah. fun. But, like, seeing someone you love so much, like, reconnect with it family. Felt real. Like, New York feels real. LA feels completely fake. So I don't know how to put that into words for all the dolls, dudes, yeah. and divas. But, like... Comment below which one you guys like better. Yeah, like every other state is like chill, normal, boring, Midwest, hunky dunky, whatever the fuck. Miami, if you don't have a BBL, honestly, like everyone like talks shit about you. Yeah. LA is just one big like balance beam of like trying not to snap on someone for being so fucking fake. Yeah. And New York is just like, it's like almost like freeing. Even yeah. though like everyone, there's so many people in it. So like small spaces, like the people are just like, oh my God. Like, I'm not, like, you guys get it. Yeah. It's and like they, real people, real experiences versus like fake people and fake experiences. <laughs> we were out one night and this one girl, her name is Linux. I don't know if you guys know her. Follow her. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what you're going to say. She is a character like no other. I'm not She's kidding. Like, it's crazy when me and Stoss meet someone and we're dying laughing because it's like, honestly, usually we're the ones doing that. Like, usually we're the energy. Yeah. But she goes... You're like kind of it girl, right? <laughs> it's like <laughs> I jaw was on the floor because I always call Lila the it girl. That's like my nickname for her. Whenever I'm down, Stoss is like Lila, you're Lila, the it girl give me. Duh. Get it the fuck together. None of these bitches know you. None. None of these bitches know your heart. At all. And none of them know your morals. Period. And that's just on period. <laughs> so she was crazy. No one cares about like clout or followers or any of that dumb, stupid shit. Like people genuinely just love like experiences and conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think that like Having that with you guys just made it that extra special. Do you think you'll move to New York this year? I honestly see it in my cards and mm -hmm. I never like, I don't know if you guys have ever like picked up and moved somewhere sp sporadically, but that's what I did for LA and I've been here for five years. I have my people. I have my family. I have my podcast. 
But there there comes a point in the LA life where like maybe it's just a little phase I'm having. Not like my transition phase. That one was real. Right. Um, <laughs> but I'm just like, I, I, I feel like such like a, almost like a robot. Like I feel like I just have to like fake act like I like someone even though I know that they were just talking shit about. It's just like such a it's mental psych. Yeah, it's exhausting. And like I grew up in Iowa. She grew up in New Jersey. So yeah. I just never want to get to a point where I'm like, like just off like humanity switched Damon and Elena style. Yeah. Salvatore brothers off. Yeah. Like I'll bite a bitch. Respectfully. So that's where I'm at with my. Well, damn. Felt kind of okay. good to unpack. I like Honestly, that. I love the therapy sesh. Okay. So moving on from New York. It was crazy. Then you went to Tahoe. Then I went to Tahoe, went skiing for the first time. That was an experience by itself. If you it guys have ever gone trip. skiing, it was me, Kaylee and like the whole James Charles family unit. That was insane. I just That's love that true. his parents went. Oh my god, I love Christians. Like kids. you had a family month, to be honest. It was insane. Like I met family that I didn't know I had, honestly. And long lost. Yeah, that was a good time. So just, you loved like, it. I loved it. It was so beautiful. Chilled, saw the mountains. Like smelt like like you know like when it, like it's cold outside, it smells like burning wood. Yeah, and you're you need like literally three inch goggles on, otherwise your corneas like burn yeah. from all like the white brightness. But I needed that. Like I needed to see like actual real snow instead of like like cocaine like at the club. Yeah, because you like, had your <laughs> Vegas, you had your New York, both were psycho. Yeah. So I feel like you needed like a trip that was like just chill. chill. I just slept. Like, let's play a board game. I we played many. Oh, board I'm sure. Games. We played Mafia. Built your Legos. Legos Twister the whole nine. I love fun. that. I love taking it back and like having a game night. I feel like it yeah. always like grounds me for sure. It was a lot of fun. So that was our little travel month. And yeah. then I went to Arizona. My friend had her bachelorette weekend. You know, party planner Lila was like doing my biggest. Let's which go. I didn't even know I could do my biggest in other cities. That's like a new learned. I know. Like, I love that. Hobby that I'm like learning about myself. Like usually when I'm in like Miami or New York, like people are like, okay, I'll come with me. But I, mm. no, I got three tables at this. Oh, I was doing my round. So that was yeah. really, really nice. Got to reconnect with some old friends. I feel like getting away from like a black hole cycle of like people that may not have your genuine interest in LA and like spending time with people that saw you from the beginning, saw you living on the kitchen floor, like saw you at your like worst slash like day one always like it's makes the my best heart whole. feeling. Yeah. Like just to have that like validation from other people. But safe to say our suitcases are zipped and our mouths aren't. I threw mine away. I'm not getting, <laughs> I'm getting a base bag. I'm doing Shay mine Mitchell, away. I'm done with your bike. Yeah. <laughs> weekender Shay, bag. let's get, let's get the brand new <laughs> popping girl. Cause my, my old one's trash. Just, just like our old men. Yeah. To be completely honest. So coming back to LA, you guys. Yeah. You start. This week has been a tough one for me. I'm not gonna lie. Lila's seen me cry like four times, honestly, which is typically And I learned a, rare... a new trait about you. What's the new trait? She does this thing. Stoss is always very, very, very happy. Like if yeah. I'm stressed or sad, someone won't know. But when Stoss is like extra happy, like I almost get confused because I'm like, what's wrong? Yeah. Like I don't know what that is in my brain. Like if I'm I like sad, it. If I'm sad, I like to make everybody else happy because it makes me happy. But in reality, I'm like the most sad. But it's like, it, it's weird. It's when we were having like lunch yesterday, right? And I was just sitting there like just smiling and just like, <laughs> like literally I'm She'll sitting, I'm sitting there like, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> the butter is like oozing Are out of this okay? bread and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? So yeah, she showed up with flowers. Line. Like she was going through it the hardest and she brought me these white roses from Trader Joe's. They suck up negative energy. I, I really do feel like it worked. I'm not kidding. My apartment was kind of giving gray cloud and then I she know. walked in. You should get me flowers this week. Okay. Just don't tell me when. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'll be a surprise day. But yeah, coming back to LA has been an experience. I think that like the traveling just hit me. I slept for three days. I cried. I had a panic attack, rearranged my whole house. Then I like had to get a spray a tan. House. Thank you, Guy Corey. Thank you, Golden Club. Love you so much. Realigning, I think, was the hardest part for me. Having somebody to depend on, you, my best friend, was all that was getting me up in the morning, honestly, because I would call you and we'd be like, okay, well, we have stuff to do. We have stuff to do for the podcast and stuff. So it's crazy because our planning is always yeah. like, you're stressed out about the spray tan. I'm like, oh my God, I, I want to go out. You like, know what it's I was like thinking about? I was actually thinking about the other day how like I stress out about the most mundane things, but like Lila will like actually 
Like, she never makes me feel invalidated, which I Ever. really appreciate. Oh, I love you. I love you more, but, I yeah. feel like we both have our moments where, like, I could literally be, like, oh, my God. Like, f- my freak cuts are so funny because it's, like, five yeah. minutes later, I'm fine. I just need to scream and tell everyone to watch the fuck out. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, you never make me feel crazy. Yeah, no. And there's been many moments where you, you could have been, like, like, that, been like Lila. Yeah. Yeah. Call a therapist. I feel like when you're like in a tough mental space, the best thing to do is like, I like to like, I literally like, I have to put myself back together. I have to get my nails done. I have to like. You're all about routine. I, I have to do something. She's or else, a Leo. Yeah, I'm a Leo with a Virgo moon, you guys. Like, I'm nuts. I'm a Taurus, so I'm just like. With a with Gemini <laughs> moon, this bitch is crazy. I'm all over the place, to be completely yeah. honest. And we, uh, it's so crazy because. I almost expect it to be the opposite ways, but boys lately, boys, because not men, children (laughs) have been literally, I don't even know how to get into it, to be completely honest. Like, she doesn't really, like, even fuck with the male species. Like, we honestly just, you know, flick each other's bean at this point. (laughs) I would love that, honestly. If you asked me on a real date, I would probably go. Okay. I would. I'm already thinking about the date (laughs) not. If you brought me flowers one day and actually wanted to pursue me, I, I'd be down because, like, at People least online I know, think we're dating. She already knows I'm trans, so it's, like... that. The hard part is out of yeah. the way. And that's another thing about our New York trip is that, like, we could literally be like, yeah, we're transgender. And all the guys would be like, hey! hey. Like, no one judges you. No one cares. Like, no one, like... New is- thing this year is just, like, laying your cards out on the fucking table and, like, not taking no shit from anybody that's the difference between New York energy and LA. LA, you're gonna like have people like that's hiding things about themselves, being fucking weirdos and shit. No, honey, we are the boss bitches that we've always wanted to be, and we're gonna own that shit. And I think it took Stoss's energy, not kidding, her existence and five years of transitioning to like for myself be like, I'm transgender. You don't care, or you care. That's embarrassing. Yeah, that's weird. You're not knocking down my front door, begging me to talk to you. You're so twisted and weird because you don't even know what we had to fucking go through to sit here with our pussies out. Yeah. And so if someone's mad about that or they're not secure with themselves, bam. At this point, if you don't make as much as my pussy was per month. Yeah. Bye. Do so. Bye. So I was talking to this guy. Let's just say his name is, you know, Adam. And he was really cute, really, like, wholesome, you know, from Canada. Not, like He was ho- not cute. Not – he was cute to me. Like, what I realized about myself is I'm out of my, like, rapper era, and now if, like, you're not, like, a sober, you're like – era. Sober DJ, like, She's, vegan. like, one tier down. <laughs> but, yeah, honestly, it's getting worse. She goes from rapper to DJ. No, they're just so different. And not even, like, a real DJ. Um <laughs> – so what's the deal with so this So I was talking guy? to him. We had a night. Didn't do anything, which is honestly kind of crazy. If a guy's spending the night at my house, like, I mean, usually something kind of just happens. <laughs> but I haven't, I've been celibate lately. It was so an accident. I sucked it, it by accident. It just went in my mouth. Like, there's <laughs> so many holes. Like, I can't. Right. Um, and so I was celibate for eight months at this point. He came over. We did nothing. The next day, I told him I was trans. He didn't care. He was like, you're a woman. Like, you're, like your soul is beautiful. You're beautiful. Like, blah, blah. And I was like, oh. Never heard that one before other than Ever. literally from Stas. And so I was like, wait, I I think whether you guys are trans or not, you can relate. Some people can't. Stas is like, mm, fuck that guy. But like, I get so attached so easily. Like, you would have thought that we were dating for years. years. <laughs> and then one thing led to another. He was still, like love bombing the fuck out of me. I've never been love bombed because like, usually it doesn't last that long. Usually I just say I was born a boy and, you know. They call their Uber X, but like, (laughs) and then it just like, he was like, I have to go celibate to focus on my career. And I'm like this, honestly, my coochie would have gave you the damn career. Yeah. But I just recently got over that. Come to find out he's honestly gay. So I'm just like, honestly, you could have just came out to me when I told you I was trans. Like 
I thought that was a really open opportunity to like be vulnerable. <laughs> Dude, I feel like a lot of these guys are like secretly hiding who they are. So they kind of like experiment sad. with like trans girls and people like in the community. I'm like, did you think I had a dick? Probably. Either way, it doesn't matter. But like he was disappointed. He was pissed. The, the cunt was too cunty. <laughs> My bad. The, the cut the cunt was cunting. Yeah, That's respectfully. Sure. Wait, so what about you? Have you been talking to any boys? I mean, I definitely had a couple I've I've been doing my rounds, you guys, you know. I just like to be appreciated. I'm just like a little baby, like whatever. I'm a brat, I'm a bitch, I'm a kind, whatever. So I was talking to this guy from Australia for a little bit, and honestly, I I really did love him. He was cute. He was like yeah. a goober. I, I loved like like Mr. Kangaroo, like the whole nine. <laughs> but he Come came to, find he came out, to that party, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. He like came, hung out with like me and Lila. Honestly, such a gentleman. Have nothing bad to say about him. No, 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 no. But I did experience for once in my life, like, um, how do you say like a like the red flag, but like in reverse. Like normally, like, like I, his past was a red flag, kinda. Yeah. So like I, me and Lila were getting a massage and I was texting him or whatever. Oh my god. I took this bitch to get a couple's <laughs> massage. Massages are like my thing. Like, but if for, if like, my man is texting me, I I'm up. Like, I look I to the I hear up. click click like tapping on her screen. I'm like, wait, did you just tell fucking Josie to stop massaging your left leg so you could text your Australian boyfriend? Oh, you bet your sweet ass she did. So I'm wondering why like Mr. Kangaroo or whatever is like sitting here and he's like always kind of disappears and does his own thing, and I'm like really confused. Come to find out, he's married. And is experiencing, what? you know, <laughs> going through a messy divorce and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong. Why is that hot to me, though? Like, is that bad? I know. I know. But don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think, like, I, I experience how people, like, take it when I tell them I'm trans. Like, I would have rather just known that you were married or divorced or and separated. And moved on. But now I'm like, yeah, you're blindsided. I had to, like, fill in the blanks a little bit. And I don't know. It just kind of fizzled out or whatever. But that was definitely a new experience for me, you guys. And I don't even know what to do at this point. Like, we can be friends. We can be cool. But, like, I'm not trying to get, like, alimony or, like, spousal support. Like, I think I'm good off of that. You know, I know a What's couple What's it called when you, like, don't or you do get the, the husband's money? What's it called again? Alimony. Or the... Spousal support? What? Or if you or if you sign up a prenup, prenup. oh my god, yeah, no, I know nothing about any of those like terms at all. So that was weird. I just feel like I'm super young. I can be p as picky as I want, and like we and you know your worth. I do, and I'm not gonna lie. Like it's, it's. I feel like such a hypocrite saying this because it's. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's my preference not to date a trans girl. It's my preference not to date anybody that was previously married or and like still to going to court for his divorce. Like, yeah. you can't go on a date with me because you have court with your ex wife. Like, I'm sorry. Literally, what? <laughs> like, Mr. Kangaroo, hop on away. Yeah. Hop, like, does he have sorry. kids too? Sorry, babe. Because that also is like. I know. I that's not like a deal breaker for me, but just in my dating experience, like I'm just so young and so new to everything, so I would like to have somebody else that's kind of doing the same thing, you know what I mean? Like a little bit younger. So that being said, that was that whole situation. I but think I it was like flirting, being like a hot girl in New York. It's a little cute, bit. like seeing Stoss. I want to. It's like new because I never see her even look at a boy. Me, on the other hand, like I, I've pulled people. <laughs> I've made my Uber stop to get someone's <laughs> well, number. I will like, run somebody over and be like, "Can I get your number?" <laughs> I will literally make the driver of the suburban hit someone with their car and, yeah. and be like, "Wait." Do you have a phone? Yeah, like, no, it's work. across the crosswalk because you just hit them with your fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> um, but seeing her like in her element, you already know you're the hottest bitch ever. So like the truth. seeing her just like full glam to the nines, like giving someone the batty eyes. I'm like, yes, you don't you don't know what you're working with, Mr. No, Mr. No, Mans. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm single. I'm on the market. I'm looking for a hot man, preferably in the 20 to 80 range um i don't really discriminate but just i feel like nothing over 72 yeah this no. is where i draw the line i feel like i just you know the soul is young right so it's like the body is the only thing that ages and the bank account just gets higher and higher <laughs> so our new thing open containers open op legs <laughs> open relationships open arms and open mouths to Cheers. be open and honest with you guys obviously and she open bank account <laughs> Open and large bank account. That's for sure. I love that. But yeah, I feel like we've both, you know, kind of 
transitioned again and i feel yeah. like lately we're in our like we're reformed women now yeah like before like we dating have standards re- now we're not taking the bottom of the barrel anymore no offense to anybody i think that's what it is and i think it's kind of fucked up that la like like not warped gay- our minds. yeah 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 because i came from we both did small ass towns fucking hot in township new jersey like bettendorf iowa so like i grew up kind of just take whatever and run like if you get someone that loves you go but personally my ex-boyfriend made me pay for a dinner at boa and so you know i accidentally crashed his car um right. and so now it i just happens. like have standards like i want to wake up in a big house like pajamas on nipples out and like yeah. frolic with my best friend in the guest house like yeah. obviously um so that being said what do you feel like this year are your rules of life so through everything that's been happening recently, honestly, we'll maybe get into a little tad of it. I feel like rule number one, and I know this is like, people are going to be like, oh, Lila, like this bitch. But like, you genuinely just can't give a fuck, especially like as a grown woman now. No like, fucks given, bitches. I'm like, if you I sit right. here like and care about every, not only like the people on online and comments and Reddit, but just like people like friends, like. If you're upset about something that I can't control, I'm an adult. First of all, communicate it. And second of all, if you're still upset, like, I, I'm sorry. I, I I don't give a fuck. What's your, what's your well, next question? Rule number two. Rule number two. No self-deprecation this year, y'all. Because I'm telling you. I think that's your biggest rule. I cannot stand. I, like, I love myself too much to ever be like, oh, well, goddamn. Like, I wish my hair was this and I wish this was that. Like, I get my head for sure. Do not verbalize it. If you verbalize it, it becomes real. It becomes your surroundings. It becomes everything around you becomes negative. And that's my biggest pet peeve when it comes to my friends and just people in general. Don't put yourself down. The world is here and already doing that. Like literally I will show up to Stassi's house and I'll be like, oh, my hair. Like even in New York, I was like my hair and she literally got so upset and chopped things. Yeah. I'm or, so like, I'll pissed be, like, at her. I feel so fat. And, and I she'll remember that day leave. too. So bad. She hated her hair so much. And I was like, Lila, I've been telling you for weeks. Like I, I need to just give me it. Give me a pair of scissors. Like, let's go. How did we cut them? Did you have your hair cutting? I think you have them. I in have your- my hair cutting scissors right now. <laughs> we were literally at the airport, and I, I'm not kidding. I swear to God. We did them in TSA. <laughs> Stoss was, like, literally offering like, the TSA people, like, I'll cut your bangs. Yeah. Like, they're in my bag. I, I was just like, want everybody to feel, like, good about themselves, you know? So if you guys are struggling, honestly, financially with yourself, with your image, whatever, this is your sign to cut bangs. Not cut kidding. Cut bangs immediately. Yeah. Really, like, putting in your roller in the morning and, like, doing your glam, like, it, it really does hit different. And I think that, like, I don't know how I got to this point. Maybe I'm brainwashed by Stas, but like it's hair. It grows back. And yeah. I think it's like a different look, different energy. Like, and hair has energy. Oh, Cut 100%. it. Get a bob. Cut your fucking bangs. Yeah. Do something. Switch it up. Wear a wig. No, literally. Buy a wig. Um, from Stas I, Beauty. I think like as long as you look hot, whether you like feel hot, but like looking hot and like being rich are two things to me that like are both a mindset. Yeah. Like if you look it, if you act it, if you think it, it's real and it happens. Trust me, I'm not kidding. Checkings and savings. I've watched me and Stoss literally have like negative five hundred dollars and like a week later Goose somehow eggs, have like babe. yeah, like turn water into fucking wine yeah. always. Don Perion. <laughs> but of course, if it's not Don P, we don't want it. Not at all. At all. And so I just feel like as long as you look hot, everything else is gonna fall into place. Showing up for yourself. Because confidence, Ooh. like like exudes out of you Mm -hmm. like when Stoss walks into the room I'm like oh she's doing her biggest but of course (laughs) that's kind of like my terms right now but yeah I feel like we've been dealing with a lot of travel a lot of boys and honestly like fake ass bitches a lot of fake ass bitches in our life and like I it's sad to see sometimes because I'm like I didn't expect this one. It's like watching an episode of Pretty Little Liars when you were in sixth yeah. grade. It's like, oh, I can't believe Allison died. <laughs> no, the fact that Allison died is rude. But just like Allison De, De Laurentiis said, secrets keep us close. <laughs> secrets keep us close. Um, and so it's just sad when you see someone like not be able to handle their own like insecurities or their own emotions and they can't communicate it as a 25 year old woman. Like it, it really does make me sad. So you've been feeling like bitches are just dropping like flies around here. They are dropping like flies. And you know what they say? The trash always takes itself out. So I, I, true. In the end, I'm very grateful. I have my family, a.k.a. Stas, mm-hmm. but also my actual blood family, which 
is rare, especially for trans people to even be close with their family. So I know if all else like disappears, I do have my people. But how do you deal with that? Like when people just like flake, disappear? It makes me sad because I think the levels of friendship in L.A. Can't are... relate. <laughs> she Not doesn't at all. care at all. Like literally, I swear, I swear to God, like her closest person could be like, no, I don't fuck with you. And she'd be like, mm, all right, well, I'm going like, to apply. I'm going to Pilates, bitch. Like, yeah, she's go. so good at that. I, maybe it's a Leo thing. Maybe it's a Taurus thing to be over, like, emotional. I don't yeah. know. Um, but I feel like my whole entire life, like, I didn't really get close with my family. So friends, to me, were always, like, my go-to. I want to see them happy. Like I, like, I just want to see everybody happy and succeed. And we just had this one friend who got upset that I was going to, going out. But she was also going out. And I'm like, I'm at the bar. Did you not want me to take a shot? Like, I'm actually confused. And then accidentally, like, I said some things that I shouldn't have. Yeah, as one does when they're upset. And that said person was right next to me. Mm -hmm. So the next day, you know, when I'm sober and everybody was sober, I said, let me take you to dinner. I feel like there's been a lot of miscommunication these last couple months. We should talk. Right. No response. No response. And the next thing I know... Me and Stoss get that big ol' unfollow on Instagram. And I was like, Damn. oh. Okay. Do your biggest. You don't know how to talk. Honestly, you just saved me a swipe at Catch Steak and a lot of emotion. Like, yeah. Cool. I'm good. I got Daisy. But I feel like friends is always such a weird thing because it's not, like after five years of this twisted, like warped reality, I'm like, is someone using me? Is someone talking shit about me? The answer is probably to both is yeah yes to be completely mm -hmm. honest and then everyone's like lila it's part of the game i'm like bitch i'm not playing monopoly and yeah. i'm not talking about alec like <laughs> like this, this is the game of life like get a clue like i don't fucking know but i don't have any clues when people can't communicate how they're feeling it leaves you as a friend to come to your own conclusion which i think is the worst thing you can do to someone is fuck with their emotions and just leave them in the dust based on how you're feeling. When you have a friendship, it's a two-way street. So if you can't say how you feel, then I guess. Yeah. Have you been bye. struggling like with friendships at all or you're just always like. I mean, I definitely like have my own issues for sure. Yeah. Like I, I've definitely had times where I can't communicate how I feel. But at the end of the day, it's like you've gotten like so much better at that. I know I used to like shut down and like not be able to talk and like throw myself under it and like a blanket <laughs> Her thing for so long. Probably two years. I still do it. though. <laughs> I saw you do it last night. Well, no, I wasn't even doing that. Well, you that, were sick. You were throwing comfort. up. Yeah. 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 By the way, everybody, I was throwing up last night. So me being here is a miracle. She does. I, I, I don't genuinely think out of our like four or five years of friendship I've ever seen her throw up like she like even if she's like like there's no throw up in her like you know but yesterday we had the elote corn dip from trader joe's trader joe's count your days bitch <laughs> joe count your days joe is gonna, i hate joe <laughs> joe's gonna be fucking the ground six feet under because I'm, I'm pissed, pissed. Joe right now. first of all i'm in recovery second of all she went to go get her fucking spray tan and she goes lila i just threw up and i go same, same. and it's like it wasn't like intentional. I was so nauseous. I was like, wait, this is something is so it wrong with this elote right. corn dip. Like Joe has something wrong in his insides um, that made it expired, obviously. But, you know, we woke our happy asses up this morning yeah. right and early. But to finish your question, I feel like when I have like because I went through pretty much the same situation as you. But I think you and said person are a little more deep into your friendship. Yeah. I like just after year is it's like oh I just come to the conclusion that like if you can't own your shit and you can't sit here and face to face tell me what happened then that is a fucking you problem baby yeah it that's, really is that's not a me problem I'm perfectly fine I'm happy the way I can no you're just perfect I'm just perfect and fine that's it babe <laughs> But the unfollow, really, babe, honey. Like, we're back in study hall in the ninth grade. Like, I'm yeah. kind of embarrassed, to be completely honest. Like, if you're going to unfollow, I'm going to disengage. Because I have no time and no fucking patience for, for these bitches. Yeah. And I know someone watching this can relate. Yeah. Because whether you are in L.A. or the goddamn Midwest, yeah. middle of nowhere... Someone's jealous. Someone's mad. Someone's mad. Someone's talking to you. And someone's, they're never going to tell you. They're just going to unfollow you. They're, yeah, they're just going to unfollow you and they're going to act 
Weird. Yeah. New word. Weird. weird. <laughs> Start calling bitches weird and they will shut their damn Weird fucking- is a curse word <laughs> in New Jersey. You don't call somebody weird until you truly feel with your whole body and your whole chest that they're that weird. They're fucking weirdo <laughs> ass bitch. So weird ass bitches, be gone. I'm done with you. I have literally, I'm not kidding. Watch thoughts like get into like, um, a pickle with someone and they'll text a, a her. A sticky one. A sticky one. We have new new vocab these days. A sticky, a one. sticky one. Um, I've watched them be like, Stas, you're being weird. Block their name and her phone is now the coffin emoji. <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> That's kidding. That's kind of what I do. I yeah. love that you do that, though. Like, even in our one argument of life, she changed my name to apologize because I needed to apologize. And you know what she did? She apologized. I damn right. I showed up. If you, if anyone wants to try, they will. Yeah. Obviously, friendships are a two-way street, but you can only do so much. You can't beg for someone's like friendship. You can't beg for their forgiveness. Like, no. whether it's any part of your life, but like especially friendships, like I guess patience, like give it time. But like if they're acting a certain way, like you are so, so much better off. Like, yeah growing on your own time you can validate your own feelings if someone's not going to validate your feelings and they don't care about you and they don't care about your feelings people these days see you do one thing that's like not on their rule book and they're like i can't relate to anything you're doing and it's like okay well why don't you ask me if i'm good why don't you ask me to go cook dinner why don't you ask me to like go skip into the movie theater and go to margaritaville before like why don't you ask me to do something wholesome so the standards have been set. If you don't reach the bar, bitch, you're below the bar and take a bar because we got to go. If you don't reach the barbell or whatever they say in fucking the bar- <laughs> I love that. In law school, don't you have to like pass the barbell? The, it's, it's, no, a barbell is like a thing. Oh, the lifting weights. Yeah, a barbell is like a workout. The bar is like the law exam where like you become a lawyer. It's called the bar or like the baby bar. Kim Kardashian took that. She took the baby bar? Yeah. And I'm just the baby bell. So. A baby bar like on a flight to Miami, honestly, hits so right? different. <laughs> so that being said, Lila, what will you be doing in 2024? What are your goals this year? What are you ready to just like put out there? Maybe it'll come back. Maybe we'll circle back on this podcast of what's going on to be completely honest like i know you guys are gonna be like oh she's just saying that having a podcast like in general but with my best friend that literally makes me so happy in general makes me so happy and Mm -hmm. like i could have gone out until six in the morning last night but i would have been up like naturally at seven because that's all my brain has been thinking about like filming this for you guys like doing this for you guys in my house I think matching outfits will probably, you know, be our thing. But <laughs> I mean, we haven't skipped a beat. Let's be real. And we never will. Ever. Um. So this definitely has been on my bucket list. Not kidding. For like years. And so I just think this pushing it like to my full extent and getting into like different worlds, whether it's acting, modeling, like just something different. Because when you get too comfortable, that's when that's when shit goes south. Yeah. I you? completely agree. I want to do something new every single week that I've never tried before. I tried skiing. I sucked at that. Okay. I don't know if I'll ever do that again. You tried Pilates? I'm in my Pilates phase. I love Pilates so much. I honestly want to try like- I want to see you do digitals. Like I want to see this bitch walk a runway. Maybe. maybe. She's so tiny. It's like no one looks like that. I just don't like competing with people. I'm not- I've never been- I've never been competitive. Like I just- I don't care enough to be competitive. I already know I'm the best. So it's like- Yeah, what are you going to tell me? I'm not? You're lying. Why compete? Like we already know, but- You can't compare. Yeah, same thing. Getting out of my comfort zone this year, I think is my biggest thing. And I think when we traveled and we're out of our comfort zone, we know that we thrive the most. So it's important as our, like, as As, friends. As teammates. As teammates to hold each other accountable and make sure that we're out of our comfort zone. I think this year is going to be our going out of the country together and, like, skipping through Europe. I want to, like, Or Dubai. Yeah, I want (laughs) to spin it the Sagrada Familia and, like. What is that? It's in the Cheetah Girls. They're, like, let me Oh, my God. Like, mean it. And then, like, we spin. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we will do it. You oh, know yeah. we'll have the outfit. I would just spin down the steps, like literally roll. <laughs> she just recently got her passport, so we are out of this bitch. Let's get stamped and get naked. <laughs> <laughs> but really, really, really quick, me and Stas were talking the other day, and we thought it would be so fun because not only as trans women, but just, you know, bad bitches and women in general um, have been through so much. I feel like 
we have a lot to say on every type of situation. So we thought it'd be so fun to do a little segment, a little tea time moment. Yeah. And so we asked you guys over on Instagram what you guys, what advice I you want to know. I'm so excited for this. Like, I want to know what the fuck is going on in y'all's lives. Oh, trust me. My Belle dolls, dudes, divas, drag so, queens, whatever. So... Question number one is, how do you find confidence with your body when all the dolls are so pumped and pear-shaped? First of all, babe, I, I don't even fuck with pears like that. Yeah, I don't. Who likes pears? And I just think bodies, Everybody like, loves french fries, though. Come on. <laughs> everyone loves a McDonald's like french fry. Extra crispy. Extra, extra salt. salt yeah. Extra ranch. Uh-huh. Duh. I, I hate that, like, some people genuinely, like, I know how it feels so much, like, all day compare yourself to other trans girls, because it's, like, some have ass implants, some have their whole face done, some have no surgery and look better than everybody, like, I, but that's with cis people, that's just with humans. That's with general. everybody, I that's feel That's just like. with a human, you can't sit there and compare yourself, how do you feel internally? You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that you have to sit there and lay in your kitchen and get pumped by a random girl from Columbia to, like... Yeah risk your health and your life just to like maybe look the same as someone else who's probably struggling. You should never conform to like the societal societal norms because like that always changes. You have to conform to what you feel like is your standard of beauty. And like, honestly, I feel like this question, like I relate to the most because I get shit on so much for not having anything done. Like I know that, so that sounds like kind of pretentious, but like- No, but it's true. Especially like- no offense next to you like a lot of people are like well i can't wait for you to get boobs i can't wait for you to get a bbl i can't wait for you to do this and it's or get a nose job and it's like i first don't. of all my nose is collapsing i'm like no offense it's so hard being next to you wait really i think it's hard being next to this bitch. i just feel like i'm always put in this box of like why don't you look more womanly but it's like for me i You're am looking at, at someone else i know right to be completely honest i'm at my own standard of beauty i don't have any desire to transition further like I but i love rather... that that's my favorite thing about you is that you're like really oh my god i need implants it's like no you don't like you literally everything about you is just so perfect like i i think that every single person trans or not yeah looks at you and is like oh but like i do like a lot of the times like feed into it but then i realize i'm like wait yeah I've never wanted that. I've never in my life thought, oh my God, this is going to be my dream body. I, maybe for a second. That's why like, I do wigs and stuff like that. Like, Find ways to soothe your own ego, soothe your own soul because like, that's the only thing that really matters. I and don't get like. me wrong. Obviously, I'm talking and I did get silicone and I did get four nose jobs. But <laughs> she found like, a lot of ways. <laughs> I wasn't looking at like, so, like Christina Aguilera's nose and being like, oh my God, I just need a nose. Like, I was like, my nose is fucking huge. I'm going to shave it four different times. And then yeah. I'm going to call it a day and probably never be able to smell again. And that's what the fuck I did. So just be yourself, babe. And everything else is going to come into play. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The next question is, I'm gay. Help. My ex wants me back. And I don't know. The dick was super bomb. And he's kind of an angel. But I don't know if it was that bomb because he's kind of manipulative. Okay, I know Ooh, how that feels like you're, you're, you're dickmatized, to be completely honest. You're dickmatized. And I can relate, but like, Sam, if the dick is dicking, do your thing. But I struggle with that because I always get attached. You can't emotionally drain yourself for someone who's like emotionally abusive just because they're like physically your type and what you want. You need to be with someone who's going to like calm you mentally and give you validation Make you feel safe. Yeah. Show you off. Be proud of you because like, she'd be a better person. I would do a lot of things for the dick right now. Lila knows. Oh my God. I would do a lot of really bad things for the dick at this moment. But right now on this podcast, not kidding. We have self control, Valdivas. We have heart and we have huspa. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what huspa is either, but I kind of like know, it. Right? Write that one down, honestly. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> you gotta. Like I said, this year is all about standards. Keep your standards high. If someone's not meeting them, they got to go. Okay. A couple more. Should I hard launch us coming out as trans? Yes. yes. Life is too fucking short. Um, I like soft launched it, honestly. I don't like have a video where I'm like, I'm trans. I just have like videos about being trans. And honestly, low-key my favorite content to film. People always find it interesting. How do you so. manage your time? <sighs> Stoss I mean, is, I think you're you very go. you're very routine. Yeah. I'm like so anal about everything. Like if I'm not in bed at 9 p.m. so I can wake up at 8 a.m. so that I can go to Starbucks at 8.30. But she'll still be over. an hour and a half late, to be honest. Yeah. Today she wasn't, which kind of 
it was surprising. Yeah. But she's about her routine. I'm just like somehow like I say yes to eight things and somehow I do them all. I just always like, I'm like, okay, what do I genuinely like need to do today? Like, oh my God, fuck. I need to like have that meeting with my tax person. Otherwise I'm going to get arrested by the IRS. Like that type thing. I always just like do it in a level of importance because as an adult, like you can't just like not. Like, apparently you have to, like, pay your bills and shit. Like, it's actually really fucking weird. You have to, like, log on and, like, pay for your, like, power. It's, like, I live here. (laughs) I thought that was enough. Um, Like, I'm breathing. Is that okay? I just think prioritize. And if someone's mad, like, if you make plans with someone and you're, like, oh, I have this because it's way more important, like, then they don't have your best interest because you have to do what's best for you in order to grow, to be completely honest. Okay. Stas, what's your favorite perfume? Um, uh, my favorite perfume ever is anything from Mason Francis Curtijan, like ba- Baccarat. But I think they have another one that's like clear. I also love Tobacco Vanilla by Tom Ford. That one's insane. She loves the vanilla scent. I mm-hmm. do too. My favorite right I now get a new one. We should is- go shopping later. I'm down. Okay. Obviously, so can we go around in our pajamas? I'm obviously down. Yes, <laughs> pajamas and UGGs. Right. Duh. Um, my favorite is Love by Killian. The Rihanna so good. Perfume, honey. It's so fucking good. And then um something a little cheaper dupe wise. I love the Ariana Cloud and Nomad by Who is Elijah? Perfume. Oh, I want to get the Billie Eilish perfume today. Let's that one's to, insane too. The Billie Eilish perfume is clearly we're gonna fire. do some shopping. Yeah. And to end it off with a bang, what are your takes on astrology and what are your big three? I love astrology. It's literally how I live my life. If you don't think astrology is real, do you think the planet's real? Do you think the stars are real? Do you think the sun is real? Do you think you were born? Yeah. She's all about astrology, to be completely honest. My big three, I'm a Leo sun, Cancer rising, and Virgo moon. And I am a Taurus sun, Gemini, Cancer rising, Gemini moon. There we go. Oh my God, I'm finally getting it down. (laughs) So that's definitely where my emotional We side. both are Cancer Risings and we found out like a couple months ago, <laughs> which I think honestly it makes so much sense because I think that's where we I are. I don't the know how we didn't person. know that sooner, Yeah, to be completely honest. Because you didn't know your start. You d- yours was wrong. I just knew I was a Taurus and I was born in Iowa. Respectfully. Like that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And last one, um, there's a lot about social media and what our favorite part is about being online, being an influencer and what you guys, if you guys are at home and you want to put yourselves out there, I literally feel like there's no better time than right now. Yeah. Like, get on threads, get on TikTok, get on Kick, get on stream on something. Like, literally, there's so many things you can do. You can literally pop up your iPhone. You don't yeah. need a camera. You don't need a huge light. You don't need all the extra shit. I literally, like, filmed my first YouTube video, like, on my, like, family's Mac and, like, farted on camera during high school. And I was like... Roll the clip. <laughs> yeah, like, that was my big one. And so I just feel like as like start the camera, start talking, eat, do whatever you want to post. And someone's going to like be inspired. Someone's going to love your attitude. Someone's going to love your personality. Yeah. I I love the sense of community that Instagram has, like specifically like the beauty community. Like I love that every Wednesday. I know that all the beauty boys that we're all posting and like commenting. Is that a thing every Wednesday? Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. For like beauty videos? Sunday. Yeah. The beauty people are that's fucking on it. And yeah. honestly, if y'all are talented in makeup, that's where the cash yeah. is. Respectfully. So get on it and pop on Post that what Lily you Lash. Love so that you don't get bored of it and just never stop. If you're gonna start, literally have like a hundred videos ready to go. Cause it's it will pop off eventually. You just have to be super persistent. Like consistency is key. I think yeah. that's my advice. Oh, for sure. Consistency. And even for us, it's hard. Like we both like she helps me so much with editing. I help her shoot stuff. She gives me like every goddamn idea in the book. Like not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> like and I I just love like my rule. Whenever I started social media, I was like, if I get one view, they they laughed, they made fun of me, or they they got inspired. Mm-hmm. And I even someone on here, I got so many questions, but even someone someone on here was like, I saw Stoss at the LGBT clinic yesterday. <laughs> How do I say hi to her next time? It's like Aww. weirdly enough, like that makes me so happy because it's but it's like say hi to her. She literally probably would have had an hour long conversation. I know. With you. I don't care. <laughs> I know they saw me like pissed off as fuck too because the lines there are so long. If you guys have been to the LGBT center, yeah. y'all No. But say hi to me. I don't care. I love everybody. I think at the end, we love everybody. Love is so strong and mm-hmm. all these bitches are 
haters. Respectfully. So I think we might have to be wrapping up soon. I think so, babe. I think we're getting we all that. We said enough, honey. <laughs> our guest for our next episode is so exciting. So Y'all iconic. are not ready. I think I could actually hold this mic for the rest of my life. I know. I love it. I don't want to like. Oh. Like, I'm actually holding on. Like, Should we cheers our mic? <laughs> cheers, mommy. Arriba. Cheers. What do, they say, what do they say in um, Arabic? Um, do you remember? I don't remember what it was. Uh, it was so oh, like like Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yes. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. But that's like that's not like a cheers. That's just like thank you God for something. So, anyways, thank you God. Thank you Buddha. Thank you Gandhi. Thank, thank you dolls, dudes, and divas. Thank you, you guys. We love you guys so much. Make sure to tune in to next episode of Lila Ability and. Thank you guys so much for watching. What do we say, Lila? <laughs> And until next time, you guys, stay, stay true. true. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was so good.